Hello friends, so today I'm going to finally get around to fixing my airbag light. So I've been putting this off for probably almost a year. Uh, my airbag went, light went on. Um, I used my code reader and checked the lights and I was throwing a, uh, I'll show you later in a little bit, but I was throwing a uh, passenger side thorax airbag code. Um, been meaning to get to it for the longest time. I've just been putting it off because I'm an idiot. I took it to one of the local shops here and they had said that uh, there was a recall on one of the airbag harnesses inside of the seat. So I went ahead and bought that. Um, and then recently I was looking through some of the parts diagrams and uh, I was also checking uh, all data. I got a all data DIY subscription. It's pretty handy to have and it was like I think it was on sale for like Christmas or Thanksgiving for like 10 bucks for a full year. So that's pretty dope. Um, I would highly suggest it. It's pretty good. It's a ton of uh, information in that. Um, and it looks like there was actually a sort of recall or a bulletin about uh, the airbag lights in the car, right? So gave uh, several different reasons why um, the airbag lights were coming on. And uh, you know, the codes were specific and it said like, if you have this code, then replace this harness. So turns out the harness that I bought um, that the shop actually diagnosed is n they were kind of right. There was a recall with the harness and uh, maybe not necessarily recall, but there was an update to the harness. And when you check part numbers, like it was a new part number, it made sense. <clears throat> but uh, according to all data in the uh, actual Porsche bulletin, the harness that I have to replace is different. And it was like a hundred bucks cheaper than the one I paid for. So that's kind of annoying. Can't really return it at this point because I've put it off for so long. All right, so uh, I just want to go over something real quick uh, when you're trying to find the proper part number um, to try and fix your airbag issue. So if you look at the 987 part diagrams, um, they're available in PDF format. If you just search Google, you should be able to find something like this. I'm using... Uh, I think this is one of the later ones, if not the latest. Um, it's actually from 2018. So let's just uh, let's type in airbag and go to the first result that we find. These are for the airbag units. Airbag, airbag, airbag. So you basically want to find the uh, diagram for the seat. And these are super helpful in trying to find the exact parts that you need. And they have a, uh, you have to be sure you're looking at the proper diagram uh, for your appropriate seat. Because uh, they have diagrams for the sport seats as well as the regular um, tombstone seats. So if we look here in this diagram, we have this harness right here, item three. So if we look here, item three, this is wire set, wire set side airbag unit. So this is probably what we're going to need, right? And this is actually the part that I ended up ordering. This uh, right side, so the passenger side, 997-612-78601. Um, they actually have a revised version. So it's the same part number except it ends in 02 instead of 01 which is what I ordered. It cost me $145 after shipping. Um, ended up being the wrong part. It uh, doesn't really, you know, if you look at this diagram, this is the only part that there is, right? So if you actually type in this number and do a search for it, um, you'll see that there is a, another result so we go here, there's two different versions of this, right? We have, uh, it's kind of hard to read these PDFs. They're not formatted very well, but we have this part, right? 
785 and 786 driver side passenger side we have a wire side uh, wire set side airbag unit and then we have another part number 685 and 686 this is wire set side airbag unit without memory same thing here without memory so this I ordered this part the 786 part uh, but I actually needed to order this 686 part which is what I did end up ordering, but I didn't find out until I, you know, it started taking the seat apart. Um, I didn't realize that, you know, there was another diagram with a whole bunch of different part numbers because um, they're not organized very well. So, um, yeah, and if we search this part number, Let's go 9976860101. You'll come across a few other diagrams. All right, so this is pointing to item 14 in the diagram. So right here. This looks more appropriate, right? Like this looks like the actual harness that I installed. There's uh, two endpoints on each side, right? But it's kind of confusing because if you look this part up, you know, like if you're searching for airbag or something you'll never find it because it's not labeled as that all it's labeled as is wire set backrest without memory right and then we can do another search and we find the same part number this time it's item 15 all it's labeled as is wire set backrest so if we look at the diagram it's 15 it's the exact same cable as far as the diagram goes um, but yeah, it's labeled something totally different. Uh, so if we go um, back to this diagram here, we can see that this uh, part that it's pointing to looks nothing like the uh, wiring harness that we actually installed, but it's the same part number. So um, anyways, my point is, uh, be very careful when you're selecting your parts because the this part that I ended up first ordering, this 786 one, this cost me, like I said, $145 after shipping. And it was the incorrect part, and I can't return it. So if anybody wants to buy it, um, hit me up, send me a message. I'll sell it to you for real cheap. Um, but this is the actual part that I needed, which is 686. And this part actually only cost me $43. Sorry, $64 after shipping. So, like I said, my point is, uh, if you're looking for the part number, you know, you're going to need, potentially need a different harness depending on the seats that you have, whether you have sports seats or standard seats, if you have memory, if you have power, all that stuff. Um, it's all in here, but it's not very clear. So, like I said, be very careful when you're looking for your part number. If you have to, I would... Or if you can, I would definitely verify with your Porsche dealer and, you know, just verify that you're getting the correct part number because these are difficult to return in the event that you order the wrong part. So I'll uh, throw up some screenshots of these two so you guys can see the part numbers and hopefully it'll help you guys get a better idea of what part number you're actually looking for if you take on this job. But anyways, uh, I'm going to try and show you guys how to do it. It looks like it's pretty simple. And again, all data has all the uh, information for doing so. So first, I'm going to take off the seats. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, just the passenger. And then hopefully I can, um, you know, kind of get the seat cover off. And hopefully getting to the harness isn't too difficult to get to. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery. Um, you know, you know how to do that, take the front panel off, um, pull off the negative cable, um, let it discharge for about 15-20 minutes or so before uh, removing the seat. Also, 
when disconnecting the battery, always make sure you don't close the boot lid, otherwise it's going to be a pain in the ass. 10 mil. I like to just grab a rag and put it, uh, you know, kind of block the terminal. Okay, so first thing we need to do is obviously I'm going to slide the seat back all the way, which this will be all the way through. Oh, what is this? Oh, look at that, a Mick Ultra. Um, so first thing you want to do, there are these covers. These cover the bolt holes um, for the seat mounts. One here, one here. Um, I'll grab my other camera. Okay, so here, uh, first thing we need to do is remove the two plastic covers that hide the bolts on the front of the seats. So all you have to do is take a flathead screwdriver and then just sort of lift up this tab here. And once you lift up the tab, you should be able to slide the cover off. It helps to uh, lift up the carpet a little bit or you could just remove it if you want. So like I said, there's this uh, a tab that you have to lift up with a screwdriver. And that's all that's keeping the cover in place. So we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So now with the covers off, we have access to our uh, two front bolts, and they are E12 reverse Torx bolts, or star pattern, whatever you want to call them. So we'll get those removed real quick. Um, here you can see the holes for the two front bolts. And then if we slide the seat forward, you can see the two bolts in the back. So these two bolts are the same size, E12, so we'll remove them real quick. Alright, so I'm going to tilt the seat back a little bit. So we've got this yellow guy. Basically going to pop this black tab this way, and this should pop out, and then you have this harness right here. Uh, kind of hard to see. But there's uh, the red tab right there. Pull that towards me, and then that pops that harness out as well. Okay, so here's Leck. Pop this guy out. That raises the yellow dude. So, okay, boom, disconnected. So now, do the same with the red guy. is now disconnected. Now I just have to pull the seat up. Hey, that actually worked pretty well. Oh. All right. Got it. So here's just a better view of uh, beneath the seat. So yeah, here's where your mounting points are. Boom, 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 boom. 
It's a wiring harness. Keep in mind, I have a pretty base uh, 987.2, so my seats are, they have heat, and uh, they're somewhat power adjusted, like the, the tilt adjust. Um, that's power, but then the rest of them, or the rest of the features on it are just manual. So all I have is uh, these two harnesses. Um, you know, if you have other options on your seats, you're gonna have more than just this. So that's it. All right, so this is my new cable that I have to replace. Um, part number is 997-612-68601. So on two ends, or on one end, sorry. So on one end we have a uh, sort of ground, green harness, black harness. Um, this is in the backrest of the seat, I believe. And then we have uh, on the other end, gray harness and a white harness. So if we take a look, at the underside of the seat, we've got, okay, so I found it right here, so that's uh, the end of the harness, that's uh, this guy, so trace the wire, I've got a label on here, it's the same part number, 997-612-68601. Um, that is my cable that is giving me the code, supposedly. So if you trace it, it goes from here all the way through here. It goes down into here, and then it goes into uh, the backrest. Kind of surprised, because I would have thought that that would go to the airbag, but the airbag is on this side. So, uh, we'll see. All right, so I also noticed that um, the other part on this end of the harness, this guy, um, that goes in to this yellow um, bracket. Or, sorry, this yellow, I don't know, harness. But it connects to this metal bracket here, so I'm gonna have to disconnect it. Um, it's right there in the center, that little L-shaped harness. I'm gonna have to somehow figure out how to pull that out of here. So first I'm gonna start off cutting the zip ties. So we have one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. This cluster of cables was, uh, um, they were all just sitting in this little clip right here. Right here. Disconnected that already. Alright, so let's cut this guy. So this just unclips uh, like so. It's easy. Uh, so there's a uh, the blue part goes um, into a hole and it goes through the metal um, bracket so basically you just have to twist the yellow part around a little bit and then it should fit in the indentation or it should fit through the hole um, in the bracket I should just be able to twist it this way I think There you go. Cool. See what I mean here? See that there's this little square um, piece, and that just goes through uh, into this little square hole. 
and then it rot you put it in at an angle and then it rotates to lock in place. See it's kind of at an angle. Okay, so if you look at the um, this little yellow bracket thing, so there's one harness, it's held in um, here. It's held into place. Uh, there's a little tab right there. And it basically just pops up and I should be able to pop that up with a screwdriver and then this first harness should pop out and then I think I can just pull out the center harness so I'm gonna pop that guy open and then pop that guy open that's gonna be a bitch There you go. Just like that. Pops right out. Boom. Harness one done. Um, I guess this guy's gonna be the same thing. Maybe. Well, slides right out. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. guy through here all right so now comes the fun part okay so the next step is to take off the uh, trim panel right here so because I have to get the backrest off so I'm gonna pop this cover off this little plastic cover um, pull this off uh, there's a couple screws for this guy. Um, let's see. So one of them is right there. You can see that. That guy. The other one is kind of by the, uh, a little further back right there. Hopefully you can see that right there. There are a little, uh, little Torx screws. Um, so let's do that. So there's actually an indentation for the screwdriver. Kind of right here. Uh, I'm just gonna pop it open and then stick my plastic tool in there. So I don't fuck it up too much. Fuck. Fuck me. There you go. That was fucking hard. So this handle, it's a uh, Torx bit. All right, so this is a Torx T30. So I'll pop this guy off. go so now I have to remove this guy um, like I said there's two screws here they're Torx, Torx screws uh, so these screws these Torx screws right here there's actually not a lot of room um, I can't fit my little uh, my Torx bit in here without possibly stripping them so I'm gonna run and grab my uh, t-handle um, Torx drivers. Alright, so I'm actually just gonna got my screwdriver and Torx bit on it. Uh, I'm actually just gonna try and lift this up. 
There we go. Worked. This guy over here. pop off. Oh shit. Snap something. So there should be a uh, yeah. You can see that. But there's a uh, electrical harness for the uh, um, backrest adjustment. Um, it's right here. Fuck. So um, the harness runs all the way through to the top. I'm just gonna unplug it. Unplugs right here at the bottom. I'll actually loosen the harness right here first. tabs over here that are holding the wire harness in seem like they're pretty durable so plug comes out like so cool that is now off there's another view of everything so now we have to remove um, this guy so it's held on by two T30 um, screws right there and then one right under here right there on it too. Oh, that's weird. The other screw apparently is a Phillips head. Um, seems kind of strange to me. Whatever. Boom. So I think this kind of goes into here. So let's um, gonna recline this a little bit. Oh, not. Shit. Okay, I just pulled at it, but there's, you can see the tabs here. There's one tab there. Oh, this tab on the back too. Right there. I don't know, I just pulled it off. back I'm going to uh, sort of pry this out from the back so this is the center of the seat all right that's get the backrest off so now we come around to the front so should 
be able to work on this front kind of clips in so I have to pull the cushion up and then out here and it disengages something like that Let's see the tabs cool all right so This is kind of the part that I was squeezing on right here. These tabs, they just slip into there. I just, you know, squeezed it in on itself. This is the tab that uh, hooks onto this guy over here. Might be a little hard to see, but there's a sort of hook right there. I got a flashlight. You can see it there. It just kind of hooks onto it. So I've heated seats, so I'm just going to disconnect the wiring harness um, real quick, and then I'll go from there. I'm just gonna cut this cable tie real quick. Backrest off. All right, so that makes a little more sense. So I was kind of weirded out earlier about the harness being on this side, and I thought it ran up the seat, um, but it actually does run to the airbag on this side. So it runs up through. Sorry about that. Runs up back here, and then it comes up here. There's a connection. Sorry, there's a connection right here. Sucks being in such a poorly lit apartment. Um, yeah, it comes up right here. There's one connection, and then all that's left is just a ground connection, which is just somewhere right in here, um, which I think I can access once I pull the airbag out right here. So right now we're going to remove these clips. I'm hoping I could just get away with one on this side, even though there's just one in the middle, but... Uh, supposedly it's impossible to take these off without breaking them so we'll see um, but yeah so basically you push it up and then there's a sort of clip or latch on the bottom part that you just unhook and then you should be able to pull out we'll see Guess what? I don't think I broke it either. Right, there it is. That is. So, this sort of tab, you just kind of pry at it with the screwdriver. Just kind of like, kind of like that. And then it pops out. That was easy. Didn't break it either. So, I think this guy should just pop out. So there's like four tabs on each side, pops out.
All right, so in order to remove the uh, airbag up here, we have to um, peel back some of the um, side um, bolsters, I guess. So it's kind of the same thing as removing the backrest. We just um, sort of pry these guys out. One, this guy, this guy. Pry it out from the bottom. There we go. Okay. So there's uh, tabs along the insides of the bolsters, and I think I just need to pop them out, kind of like that. press it in So if you look at it, there's uh, just sort of, I mean, it's referred to in the um, all data as piping, but basically just goes around this um, metal bracket and just kind of folds over it um, and it secures it to the metal. All right, so uh, further up the bolster, we have uh, a couple clips right here. Um, there's one here and one here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but it looks like if I just uh, kind of put a screwdriver in here, pry it open a little bit, I should be able to get this uh, piping out. God damn it. Fuck. So you gotta be a little forceful. There you go. Once you expose the foam, you can see that there is one screw here and one screw there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Kind of see it right there. So basically, that holds the airbag in place so I'm just gonna undo those two bolts and then the airbag should pop off. Assuming they're T30s. There we go. Good job. So yeah here's a better view. Hopefully you could see inside. So once we pull it out, we are greeted with the harnesses that I need. So yeah, all I have to do is uh, undo those harnesses, run the new one, connect everything up, and that should be it. All right, so now we're going to remove the harness from the airbag. Just a 10 millimeter uh, nut. And then to remove the harness, you just um, push this orange clip this way towards me, and it should come out. Just gonna be kind of careful with this. Just the bolt or the nut. So the nut comes attached to the uh, the terminal here. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna 
pop it this way just like that it should pull out Pop out like that. So there we go. We got the airbag out. In order to get this harness out, I think there's a another zip tie somewhere under this uh, bolster. So I'm just gonna peel this back a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect this uh, other harness for the heated seats, and then I think I should be able to access the tie that's securing the harness, and then I should be able to pull it through. So behind the bolster, um, you can see the harness right here. It's a, uh, there's a really tiny gap. I'm not gonna be able to fit the uh, actual harnesses through there, the uh, plastic harnesses, but I think this plate comes off. Um, I should be able to at least move it a little bit in order to create space to pull the harness through this hole. So there's one Phillips head screw right here. Oops, head screws out. Still can't. Uh, I might be able to bend a little bit. I think I have enough space to pull the harness through. Maybe. Looks like I'm going to have to remove more of the padding. So, uh, was able to pull this um, backside off just pulling it out it's just it's got a tab there um, and then just kind of take a pry tool and just pop this out it just kind of is wedged in um, so I'm pop that out all the way to the um, to where it starts to curve um, then I have to remove the side airbag frame which uh, it seems like you just sort of take a screwdriver and uh, sort of pry it out. Yeah, so it just kind of clips in. Um, Chopped it up a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, that's what you have to do. Uh, now I have to unclip this side right here. Um, don't quite know how. There you go. So this should come off now. Cool. All right. So now it's a little more exposed. All right. So yeah, there is a Phillips head screw right here. Uh, hopefully, once I remove this, the panel will be loose enough for me to fit the wiring harness through. That way, I don't have to remove more of the foam. I think the panel does indeed move enough, maybe. Yep, hell yeah. Harness 
harness is through. So the harness again goes through um, part of this seat. Try to get better light on this. So yeah, this harness goes through the seat uh, like so, and I'm just going to run it goes through here and then onto the other side of the seat with the seat belt buckle. So I'm just going to run it through, cut a couple more zip ties and should be good. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, also pull up this uh, side of the bolster because I can't see the... Um, access points for in which the harness runs through down into here so that just pops out like that this guy just slides out from under here not sure how's that So now I can see where the uh, harness runs through. It's a pretty tight fucking hole. Okay, so I think I can remove this. Uh, uh, there's uh, this plastic trim piece right here. This guy. I think I can remove that. Um, it looks like it just, <coughs> there's a little clip on the inside. See, so yeah, probably a little hard to see, but the clip's right here. Uh, let's see if we can focus it on that. So it's right here, this guy. All right, so that, that's there. Now it's just a little Clipped on a little bit. Okay, so this plastic piece was right here. Um, it's clipped on over here, so it slides that way, I believe. Might be another pin somewhere, actually. You can kind of see it around here, too this guy so that's blocking the uh, kind of like a just a guide for the uh, harnesses so there's this uh, sort of guard on the bottom um, so there's torque screw here and here held on by a uh, um, little nuts so I think if I take that off, it should give me, uh, it's kind of wedging in the plastic trim piece. So I think if I take that off or loosen it, should be able to get that plastic piece off. Maybe. It's kind of tight. So I think it's a, I'm using a T20, but it's really a T25. I think, and the nut is, I think, uh, about 7 mil, I think. This guide is kind of attached to uh, a lot of shit. But by pulling it down like that, this comes off. Presto. Bingo, bango, buffalo. Look at all that access I have. 
Fuck yeah. Alright. Really not that much access. <laughs> um, well, actually. If I move that. Yep. Cool. Alright. Now we just have to run the wires. So just gonna pull this wiring harness through then. Alright. The harness is through. Ah what a fucking pain. Ah. All right, well now, all we have to do is run the new harness and uh, put everything back to fucking together. Hopefully it works. Um, you know, insulation should be uh, just reverse of removing. I'm sure I'll run into plenty of problems. Um, but. Hope not. All right, so obviously uh, I'm gonna run into snags while uh, reinstalling everything, uh, putting everything back together. Um, I ended up routing the airbag harness uh, slightly incorrectly. Um, Cause I had a bunch of extra slack for some reason. Um, but I figured it out once I uh, put the seat cover back on. But what I discovered is that I did a little bit of extra work. I ended up, uh, you know, unclipping the whole seat cover um, up to about here or so um, when I didn't need to. You know, I unclipped this part, um, went up the back of the seat, unclipped around the airbag. Um, what I discovered is that all, all I really needed to do was just um, peel back the cover from the side and then just move the bolster over so that I could access that screw that was over here um, and just loosen the plate. So um, save yourself a little bit of extra work. Uh, you know, don't damage your seats um, when you don't need to. So just pro tip. All right. So, got the seat all done. I mean, it w all went back together as planned. Uh, just took a while. But, yep, all done. Uh, easier than I thought. It was obviously quite the headache. I was originally gonna take this to an up uh, reupholster shop. Um, Cause I was afraid there was gonna be like hog rings and all that shit. You know, just complicated um, upholstery work that I don't have the means or know-how to do. But, it was actually uh, pretty good. The seat covers are made uh, very well. And they actually... Um, come off and come together. Um, install and remove, actually... Uh, very easily like the quality is truly there like it just it's perfectly formed and it comes on and off as expected it's pretty sick all right so I got the seat installed so uh, which was quite a pain in the ass um, the sliders were uneven and I had to a lot of trouble getting them even um, in order to properly mount them so anyways, uh, we'll go, got my iCar soft plugged in, diagnose, Porsche, mm -hmm. Porsche, okay, select the model, okay, Automatic. Scan, scan, scan. Oh. 
toss it. Clear these. Okay, we'll read again. Okay. Guess we'll see what happens. Alright, so I just got done um reinstalling the seat and uh I cleared the code with my uh code reader. So far it's working fine. Um like I said, reinstallation uh was just the reverse of removal. Um pretty straightforward. Uh I highly suggest that you take pictures or video uh between steps during the removal process. It's just gonna make uh, installation so much easier. Um, you know, it's really nice to have the reference of like where your wiring harness was ran, all your zip ties, where you removed all your screws and stuff. Um, I had a one missing uh, torque screw left over and I couldn't for the life of me figure out where the fuck it came from. Uh, but I watched, rewatched one of the videos that I filmed <clears throat> and it turned out it was uh, from one of the side covers. So, like I said, it's super helpful. I think uh, definitely worth doing, even if it's a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, so all in all, it was pain in the ass. It was my first time ever removing like a seat cover from a seat, but you know, I have to say it was definitely easier than I thought it would be. Uh, luckily, I had the uh, reference material from from all data. Without that, I would have I wouldn't have had a clue where to start. Anyways, um, hopefully, you know you guys never have to do this because, like I said, it was it was easy, but it was also kind of a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, if you have to, I hope this helps. I apologize for the very very poor lighting. That being said, uh, if you like these videos, like and subscribe. All right, anyways. Like I said, hope it helps. Deuces.